three portraits with three non-portrait lenses. Sounds interesting. Sounds average. So, let's talk about portraits, baby. Let's talk about you and me. Okay, <laughs> let's do it. So yeah, today we're gonna shoot with three different lenses that you don't usually use for portraits. Interesting. Now, what do you usually use for portraits? For usually, I would stick with the 25 millimeter. Yeah, on the micro four thirds, yeah. 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 And I think it's usually the best. Yeah, you, you, you can't go wrong with it. Yeah, okay. yeah. But because because we don't like to stay average mm -hmm. on the show, we decided to take some three very non-average lenses. First, we have the uh, 12 millimeter. So this is like a documentary lens. Yeah, kind of like a street photography yeah. fan favorite thing. Yeah. yeah. Then we have the eight millimeter fish eye. So it will be interesting to uh, shoot a portrait. Have you done a portrait with a fish eye? I have attempted many and they have all gone to the trash bin and my wife has told me to delete them straight from the camera. Oh, okay. So it's not a flattering lens. It is not a flattering lens. Okay. Well, we'll see about that. And the third one is going to be 40 to 150, but we're only going to use it from 100 millimeters up. <laughs> <laughs> that should be interesting. All right. So what shall we start with? Let's start with the 12 millimeter lens and we're going to try to use it wide field of view or its advantage and uh, try to mimic the, like a, a real setting. So yeah. we're going to get real close. It's a wider field of view. So we're going to see a bit more of the surrounding one, but you're still able to get pretty close without it looking, without me looking too distorted, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's do it. We're going to use our friend in the photo to tell a story. So what we're doing is we're creating more drama in the scene by separating us physically, mm -hmm. and that also separates us emotionally from each other. You can look at the floor here. Am I rolling my sleeves? Yes, okay. you can do it like that. Okay. Good, that's a wrap. Awesome! Okay, so this next one's gonna be interesting. Uh, it is the 40 to 150 Olympus Zuiko Digital. Digital. Now, this is one of those lenses that you usually find in birding and wildlife huts instead of the, the portrait scene. So, why do you think this is gonna work so well? Well, the lens compresses the background and the foreground so much that we can use this boring living room and make it look like a professional photo shoot. So I'm placing Janne in front of the curtains. Hello. Now your face is a bit underexposed and there's no light, so we're okay. gonna bring just a simple white foam board. All right, and so you can hold it up right. here. So do you want like a beauty light from up yeah. here? All right, yes. so a beauty light, okay. You're gonna do so it. Pretty good like beauty that. light. Because the field of view is so narrow, what this is allowing us to do is place subjects really near the frame without them being in the shot. So if we were on a wider angle, we'd need to have these huge soft boxes and things to want to get the same kind of results we're doing now. But instead, we're using very mundane, normal DIY items to get the kind of lighting that would usually cost you a lot of money to do it in a studio. Yeah, so we're just using this white foam board and a white pillow. So anything that's white and can reflect light, you can use on your advantage. White like me, I could just take my shirt off and yeah. do the same job. Are you? <laughs> Boom, we good? We good. Yeah. Okay, so that's a wrap. Uh, let's go to the last lens. All right, from super tele to super wide. Yikes. Yikes. Now this freaks me out every single time. Yeah. The fish eye, nothing hides from it. So we're gonna have to use everything that we have at our place to our advantage. So since we can't hide anything, we're gonna show a place where we have enough real estate that doesn't look ugly and messy, yeah. which is our wall and corner of our little place here. And since the lens is such a tricky one, we're gonna do something completely different. So we're gonna try to recreate a Spider-Man yeah. on our wall. So with a lens like this, you want to put emphasis not on the face of the person, but to tell the portrait with the actions of them. That's because if you bring it very close, like this, you'll get all kinds of distortions, and it just simply won't work as well. Janne, ready? Okay. I'm gonna could keep you on. could you give us a jump? All right. And I'm gonna try to stop you. I'm gonna use the high speed uh, high speed shutter in here and take as many photos as I can. Kids, if you do try this at home, I do not take any guarantees that you will make it all live. Three, 
two, one. Now in the words of Sir Little John, we have gone to the windows and to the walls. Skid, skid, skid. And we have our Spider-Man in the bin. No, mm -hmm. in the jar. <laughs> Where does the spider go? <laughs> okay, it's a wrap and we're gonna edit these photos and uh, let's get back to the table and view the results. Sounds good. Okay, first one, 12 millimeter. How did it go? I think this one is the one I was most confident in working, mm -hmm. and I'm not surprised. Uh, it's something that I'm familiar with, and yeah. I think it worked. We really made it work to our advantage. So mm -hmm. let's have, you want to have a look at the photo? Absolutely. Right. Okay, so what do you say? Well, it's look very nice. I, and wow. I'm, I'm really digging this. I think what you did with, with separating us really worked well. Mm. Uh, and also, I mean, originally I thought it was gonna work better with me facing away with this dark, like into mm. the shadows. Mm. But I think actually this, the, the shot that you picked looks even better. Yeah. It's kind of that I'm looking back in regrets at Misa. Yeah, exactly. At what a friend I picked. And you can definitely tell that there's something happening in this photo and between the persons. Yeah, so the drama's there, the photo's there, we worked it to some advantage and it could be from a thriller, a cinematic, action movie or... Well, an average action movie, maybe. At least, or, or a great newspaper article. Yeah. But uh, let's see, you know, this worked. Let's see what we have and move on to the next okay. one. And uh, for the next one, we went with the 40 to 150 and we did a classic, like a studio headshot. Yeah, and this is more like a beauty lighting. You know, mm -hmm. I'm not the most beautiful subject, or let's say I'm average. I'm an average subject average in terms guy. of average guy for beauty lighting. Yeah. But I think it still supplements well. The catch lights in the eyes are looking amazing. The blues in my eyes really pop. Yeah, yeah. You know, it, it looks nice. And you, you would have no idea that this was shot in a studio. And you can actually, if you zoom in, you can, you can also see all the lighting. Mm -hmm. Now that's a pro tip. If you're able to see portraits like this, and we're gonna show you a little zoom in, you can see a lot of the lighting in the eyes of the people. Yeah. And with that, you're able to kind of recreate a bunch of the lighting that you see in portraits that you like. Mm. And did we even crop anything out or is the white all natural? It's, it's naturally like that. Okay, so it's natural like it's just totally blown on. Yeah. We're able to make, give that nice little gradient into the chins. Yeah, and it's all because of that foam board and that white pillow. Yeah, that's amazing, what you can do with small things. So that went good. Yeah, right. that went good. Yeah. I like that, works, does the job, makes an average guy look more pretty. And, okay, so last and one, you ready, you ready to see the big reveal? Ba -ba. Okay, there's your spider. I am surprised. I have reasons to why this works really well, but I wanna hear from the photographer first. Why did you make the choice that you did? Well, by going really low and shooting Towards, Hello, towards the slow. ceiling, <laughs> exactly. I was able to get Janne to look like he's really high up in the ceiling. And I was just about yay high, right? Mm -hmm, yeah. yeah. So really kind of faking it. Now the other thing is, I think we're using the roof and the lines to advantage. Now if you look at this photo, guys, see it? All the lines from both corners lead, lead into my face and the line from the curtain leads into my face. So everything is leading, because we, we're taking a portrait Mm -hmm. Although it's a full body portrait, mm -hmm. we actually have everything in the photo pointing towards my face and towards what is going on with, with that grid of yours. With that grid of mine. So it's really apparent, it's really easy to look at. Once you open it, you, you instantly focus on my face mm -hmm. and, it, and it works that way. So pro tip, with the lens as wide as this, the lines are gonna distort anyways, but they actually can look really cool. So use them to your advantage, give them that curvature, let them guide the eye of the viewer into the place where you want their attention. Yeah. So, so three portraits with some three non-portrait friendly lenses. How do you think we did? Uh, I think we did perfectly average. Yeah, and we wanna hear from you guys on how you think we did. Uh, so please comment, let us know about the pictures. If you have any more tips or things that you noticed, we'd love to hear from you. And send us your own pictures, show us those wide angles, those super tele zooms, and those street style documentary magic shots that you get. Yeah, thank you for watching and See you on the next episode. Toodaloo.